Greetings, my name is Chris aka The Philosopher's Games or TPH Games as my little games channel here is called and Phantom Liberty, the expansion for Cyberpunk 2077 was released. A lot of people might ask themselves, should I start a new character or can I take my old character from my previous playthrough into Phantom Liberty? Or what is if I don't want to play again through the story of Cyberpunk to the point where I can access the DLC? I try to answer those questions and also we'll look into some builds later in the video. With patch 2.0 that was released shortly before Phantom Liberty, a lot of changes came to the game, especially to the skill tree and also how damage is calculated, how healing items are used in combat and so on and so forth. There were just a lot of changes in those systems, but also a lot of interesting and cool additions to the game that in my opinion are very positive overall. This though creates the interesting situation that it's like almost playing a completely new game, at least when it comes to the game mechanics. That is why I would recommend to start a new character for the game. You even have the option before the character creation starts, the game asks you if you want to start in the expansion or if you want to make a full new playthrough of the game. So if you like the story and maybe want to replay it again to refresh your memory, that's potentially a very good opportunity to just start from the beginning. And if you don't have the time for a relatively long game, then you can also jump directly into Phantom Liberty. If you choose the option to start a character that can already access the content of Phantom Liberty, you have a level 15 character and the game allows you to reset the attributes points that are already spent there. You also have some items, some weapons, some vehicles and also progress to the story into a certain point for this to work. The rest of the main game you can of course still experience with that character as well. But what is now with the people who want to play the DLC with their existing character, like me? You have to be prepared that you have to basically rebuild your character from scratch. And you also lost a bit of progress of your older playthrough that you just did on the older versions. There's a simple reason for that. For example, clothing mods don't exist anymore. Your clothes are just clothes now. They don't have armor values and so on. So all the effort you put into getting clothes with good armor values plus very good clothing mods was for nothing for now, which I find personally very unfortunate. All these possibilities are now kind of moved more into the cyberware and you have to definitely look into that as well. Unfortunately, not all cyberware you bought is now also available for you because some cyberware was removed, completely changed and now you have to buy a lot of stuff unfortunately again and it's very expensive. So I hope you have some cash reserves left. I definitely would assume if you have a max level character and want to update everything that you have to spend around about 300k on um, upgrades. So that's quite a lot. Also weapon mods got changed a lot, which means that all your existing weapon mods are basically gone and you have to rebuy them. But I have to admit what they did with the weapon mods, I like quite a bit. There are some very cool and interesting ones now. And you can also buy, let's say rare weapon mods. If you get two of them, you can combine them and get then the epic weapon mod and two epics then make a legendary, the highest tier the ep rare epic legendary uncommon etc does not exist anymore. It's now just um, called tier one, two, three, four and five. And then there's also five plus five plus plus and so on. Also iconic weapons can't use weapon mods anymore, which I also find a bit unfortunate. They even removed some, let's call them utility slots. Like for example, revolvers can't use silences anymore, etc. By the way, the crafting menu is not a main menu point anymore. It's now a sub menu of the inventory. So it's a bit hidden now. You can also access it by pressing the K key. When I first didn't see it, I assumed they removed crafting completely from the game, but it's still there. But the perks of the skill trees don't have much influence on crafting anymore. As you can see, you have to rebuild your character from scratch. So maybe let us now look finally into some builds and I hope I can give you an overview of what is possible and maybe help you out because I at the beginning also struggled a bit. My old build was dead, it was not working anymore 
and I had to find new passes. Overall I can already spoil that I like the direction where the game is going with the builds, but what I noticed is that the builds are now more interesting, but they are maybe in variety a little bit more limited than they were before. So the builds are cooler now, but there are less of them. Disclaimer, I don't claim that my builds are very good or well thought out or very efficient. There will be better builds than that at some point, but it's just there for a basic overview with some classic builds. I tested all my builds on the highest difficulty against max tech and try to survive as long as possible and kill as many as possible and see how easy it is. My test character is level 50 and has everything on at least tier 5 plus. Let us start with the foundation because I noticed that with basically every build I always ended up skilling two trees in particular that are body and technical ability. The reason for that is I wanted to find max tech. For that I need at least two things. That is I need to be a bit tanky and I need sustain. So I need to recover. And you get most of that in both of those trees. There's also a bit of that in the reflex tree. Also the cool tree has interestingly some defensive options as well, but they're also relatively build dependent. In the body tree, what I always want to get is adrenaline rush. You need 15 points of body for that. And it basically gives you, let's call it a shield that slowly decays. And you get this shield by using a health item. If you use blood pump as cyberware, this also becomes very powerful. It's called Dwarf Head and it gives you 100% mitigation chance for two seconds. That means you get a lot of damage, you heal and mitigation basically by default reduces the incoming damage by 50%. The rest here is just to get additional regeneration, which, which is very useful as you can imagine. Also Fury Road gives your car a lot more tankiness, which can be also quite cool in combat. Car vehicle combat and damage is also quite strong, I have to admit, and a lot of fun in my opinion. The rest is just there to make Adrenaline Rush a little bit better. For example, Unstoppable Force can be also very useful if you know the enemies use a lot of status effects on you. Interestingly, the technical ability tree also has some synergy with what we just um, did in the body tree because Health Freak, for example, gives you an additional health item charge, which as you can imagine is very useful to have and powerful just for that. And it also gives you some other benefits which improve in getting these health charges faster, also some grenade charges. I should mention that health items are not consumables anymore, so items you need to buy or find in the game, but it's now basically an ability that has charges and if you use it, it takes a moment for them to automatically refill. Same with grenades. However, for the synergy, I would recommend using the cyberware blood pump to heal so you get the synergy. But let us now move to the technical ability tree. There you also have some synergy. For example, you have Health Freak, which gives you an additional charge for your health item that it also includes the blood pump. So you have one more heal, which is, as you can imagine, very powerful and useful to have. Same is also going with the grenade. There's also one max grenade on demolitions, surplus, and so on. There's also Pyromania, which can even give you also 10% uh, mitigation uh, chance per stack of Pyromania. So if you like using grenades, that's useful. And grenades are also improved in my opinion because they reworked the grenades in the game and added some special effect to everyone, I think, except for the smoke grenade, which is also new. And for example, the biohaz grenade now slows enemies, also applies poison to them and also reduces their melee damage by quite a big amount. So all of them have like a cool effect. The um, EMP grenade now deactivates cyberware and stuff like that. So very powerful actually. And I started using the grenades a lot more often compared to before. So a huge improvement in my opinion. Another very important part of the technical ability tree is in the middle and that is about cyberware. Because they removed clothing mods in the game, you now have to do what clothing mods did before in the cy with cyberware. And the cyberware was upgraded to fulfill this role. So it became even more important than before. And this tree allows you to, for example, carry more cyberware, which is, as you can imagine, very important. And there are some highlights in this tree. I think the biggest one is definitely 
called Edge Runner. And this is oh, will always be a question for your build. Do I need Edge Runner or not? What it does is it gives you 50 points more cyberware capacity. So now your cyberware consumes this capacity. And if you not have enough capacity, you can't install new cyberware. And there are not that many ways to increase your cyberware capacity. Edge Runner is one way. The other would be the Renaissance Punk, which gives you plus four cyberware capacity for each attribute at nine or higher. So these are basically the two ways. In the game, there are also cyberware capacity shards that you can find. I found very few so far and only in Phantom Liberty, mostly in airdrops. So maybe do those if you want to get some of them and they increase your capacity only by plus two. So you can get a little bit more if you find those shards at times, but it's not that much. And you have to consider some of the big cyberware of things cost like 30 cyberware capacity and you end up there very, very fast. However, Edge Runner definitely makes a lot of things possible that would otherwise be impossible. And I think a lot of your, a lot of people will build their build around this ability. Do I need it? Do I not need it? If you need it, you need to put 20 points into tech ability, otherwise 15, because I assume you want to unlock the cyberware slots. Another recommendation in this is a shipware connoisseur. You also need driver update um, the perk for it. And what it does is basically now when you are at a ripper dock, you can click on your cyberware and then upgrade it to a little higher tier, for example, from five to five plus. And if you do this, you now get a selection of stats that for this cyberware, very little things like plus five armor, plus three health, maybe plus 1% crit chance. And since you have a lot of slots, if you have all this activated, this can add up quite a bit and definitely um, fine tune your build. And I find this very interesting. You always get these stats, I think, but with um, Chipware Connoisseur, you get like to select from three. So you get the maximum out of it. And there are also some interesting abilities in this because at times you get something like enemies that are poisoned, deal less damage to you. Or for example, enemy do more damage to enemies that bleed or increase your headshot modifier, something like this. And these little tweaks can fit very well to certain builds and I would look into those. So that's why I would definitely recommend getting that. One ability I maybe should also explain is a build different with the cellular adapter. That is an additional cyberware that you can buy that you can only equip if this perk is installed. It's really good, especially for tech weapon builds. Also for tech weapons, you also have um, a little tree in technical ability as well, which is quite powerful in my opinion. I think this video would get just far too long if I go through every build in detail. So I just give you the conclusion of the builds I tested so far and um, tell you if they're good or not. I also show you maybe what I skilled on screen so you can look for yourself. But the foundation for the builds I tested was pretty much always the same, like 15 points in body and 20 or 15 points in tech ability for the cyberware. What you do out of this, like if you want to play a shotgun build, for example, you go into body and just skill everything shotgun related that you find useful. It's very simple, like these skill trees skill themselves almost, like there's not much to look out for that you can miss or some cross tree synergy that's very rare. You fine tune and improve your build mainly over your cyberware. So definitely check shipware connoisseur for that. And also maybe weapon mods and your weapon choice. The first build I want to talk about is the blunt weapon build. And in my opinion, it was the strongest of those I tested. It was just also a lot of fun, I have to admit, because of the new abilities. First of all, Quake, which is an awesome ability. There's a perk that also allows you to heal with Quake. I would recommend that. There's also another perk called Breakthrough that um, allows you to reduce enemy armor by 40% when using a strong attack. Very useful. And of course, the Savage Sling, which is a finisher. And also you need 20 points to skill that in body. Since you already skill 15 points to get Adrenaline Rush with almost every build, especially melee builds, it's a very cost efficient build. You just put in five points more and you get it. And the finisher, you have to keep in mind that when you use the finisher, the normal one, not the throw, you are invulnerable for a moment or the enemies stop attacking you. At least you don't get damaged. That's the point. And you get some health back. And with a combination of Quake, getting health back from finishes and 
stun locking enemies and doing a lot of damage on each swing, you can imagine that this build is absolute unstoppable. Like, you become an unstoppable force, almost unkillable with that. The next build, which is in my opinion also equally strong, is the Blade build. I used the Katana and that worked pretty well. It was strong before, it is still very strong in comparison to some of the other builds and also very similar to the, uh, uh, to the Blunt Weapon build we just discussed. It also has finishes and you even have a perk that you can get the finisher from further away, which is very useful. So you can zip around quite a bit. There's also this thunderclap ability that also lets you um, zip around on strong attacks. Pretty cool as well. It's a lot of fun and you do also the finishers. You get even more health back, like 25% versus 20% in the blunt weapon build. And it's pretty classic. I feel like the Mantis blades are a bit weaker than they were before or definitely weaker, but they are still viable. Like it's not like you can't kill anything with it and it's completely unplayable. That is not the case, but um, if you are used to what Mantis Blades could do previously, you might be a bit disappointed. Also, if you wonder where the different elemental damage types for Mantis Blades are, previously you could switch out the blades. That is not possible anymore. You have to buy a new Mantis Blade with the corresponding damage type you want. The next build is my favorite so far, this rowing weapons build. And that is surprisingly strong and also so much fun to play, but also a bit more challenging than some of the other builds because you have to land your headshots and also sometimes position yourself smartly. So it has its own challenges to manage your resources. When you throw a knife, you lose it for a moment and it goes on cooldown and comes back automatically. However, the core ability of this build is juggler and if you kill somebody with a headshot, a crit or with poison, your throwing weapons are all reset and you get them back and can just continue. And with this you can just start a machine of death basically, killing everything. Just activate your Sandivistan, slow the time and just headshot everything to death that you can find. It's very satisfying and also very fun and you feel insanely badass and powerful. Another core ability for this build is also the finisher, which you can even update so you can do the finisher from further away, which is very powerful. And it also gives you back 25% health, same as the blade finisher. And that helps a lot staying alive. Same as with the melee builds, I also like having the air dash with the throwing weapons build because as said, it gives you so much mobility and also survivability allows you also to get close onto enemies very quick. It's just very helpful to have and this build is also kind of a hybrid between close range and let's say mid range. I guess the build has its problems on long range fights where the enemy is very far away, some snipers or so, very annoying to deal with. Also mechs can be a problem but with um, the vulnerability update from the relic tree that also becomes far less of a problem I have to admit. I might make an additional video where I show this build in a bit more detail. Then I also tested the classics like sniper rifles and revolvers which are now in the same tree and also shotguns which is also in the body tree. I might start with shotguns. I think shotguns are still very strong and also very cost efficient to skill because usually you want to have 15 points in body anyway to get adrenaline rush. So you just add 5 attribute points and get all the shotgun perks on the left side of the body tree and some shotgun, some cyberware and your build is almost done already, which is just very easy to achieve and very cost efficient in my opinion. You might want to get also the air dash, then you of course need 15 points in reflexes to get that. But beyond that, it's just more fine tuning and the core build is really easy to get. The perk to get Obliterate is really fun, but also Rip and Tear is very powerful in my opinion. You can just add, if you are very close to an enemy, a melee attack with your shotgun and then shoot to empower the shotgun shot. And it also works the other way around. So your loop is kind of melee attack, shot, melee attack, shot, melee attack, shot and so on, which is very powerful. 
If you use a tech shotgun, which I personally like a lot, you can also get the tech weapon perks because you have 15 tech ability most likely anyway to get the cyberware perks. And the tech weapon perks are just very powerful in my opinion. One allows you to ignore armor with bold and bold also is a cool ability, which needs a bit of timing. There's one perk I think called Thunderstorm, which reduces the time it takes to charge up the bold, but this messes with my timing, so I don't get it out consistently. That's why I don't skill it, but I think it would be good if you can hit the timing every time, but if you can't, it's I think not that good. So the shotgun build, very straightforward, but also very fun, especially if your enemies just fly three meters back and you feel like the Terminator. The sniper rifle build in a strange way is quite similar, just that you are much further away from the enemy when shooting, and it also is still very strong. I felt like, yeah, that's completely viable and works. I personally like uh, the tech weapons a lot, so I use the tech weapon abilities here. In the cool tree, you have the sniper rifle and pistol slash revolver abilities like Dead Eye, for example, which gives you a higher crit chance, very useful to have. Overall, there are not too many things there that are surprising. It's a very straightforward build again. You use your favorite sniper rifle and just try to do as much headshot damage as possible. Of course, a 20 points perk nerves of tungsten steel is also really good for sniper rifle that works. Revolvers and pistols tie into that as well. I feel like the tech revolver is really good, but some of the other revolvers feel a little bit weaker or quite a bit weaker than they were before. So expect a little bit less here. Definitely have a look into tech revolvers, which due to bold and ignoring armor can be quite strong still. And I had a lot of fun using those as well. Comrade's hammer suffered a bit because it only has one shot and has to reload then. That is a problem as you can imagine. So maybe take a normal one that has four shots instead. That um, definitely helps. Or there's also a new tech revolver in Phantom Liberty, but it only has two shots. Speaking about the iconic revolvers, that is. In comparison though, I feel like pistols got more powerful, like the Apparition, which I think you can only get when you play as Corpo, is really strong in my opinion. Also the Lizzie's I felt was pretty strong and um, some others as well. Keep in mind though that um, you can't put silences on your revolvers anymore, which was a bit unfortunate because I played like a stealth revolver sniper build previously and this simply doesn't work anymore. The times of having like 300,000 damage crits with your revolver outside of combat are unfortunately over. Then I tested the quick hack build and it was also surprisingly viable since I read that quick hacks aren't that strong anymore, but you definitely need a lot of abilities for it to work it seems and also to utilize those abilities which is quite difficult in my opinion. There's a lot of things to consider when applying those hacks, but it's of course a slower build, it needs some bit of patience and so on. You need to select your hacks now in the right order. I think the biggest change is that there are now queues, so you can have multiple hacks on one target and there are kind of, you could say, combos you can do with those. So you place your cripple hack first and then the damage hacks that follow after it do more damage, stuff like that you have to consider. Also, there is a new core ability called overclock and that allows you to use your health as additional RAM and this is needed to get out a lot of damage and hacks with this and it's also quite fun because due to all the changes I think it's more interesting and maybe also challenging to play this so that makes it in my opinion quite fun but it also needs like I said some practice it's a more complex build and it's very expensive because you have to put in so many points into intelligence, but if you want to do other stuff, you also need to put points there. And in comparison, you spend a lot of perk points just in intelligence, and then you have to see what is left for other stuff. Still, I think people might like it, and there is some synergy with Monowire as well. Keep in mind that the Relic Tree in Phantom Liberty also adds some Monowire stuff, so look out for that, but I have not tested those yet. And the last build is unfortunately the weakest. That was also a build I definitely had interest in playing. That is unfortunately the Assault Rifle and SMG build. It's not like that Assault Rifles and SMGs are currently unplayable. They are definitely playable, especially maybe on normal or even hard. On very hard I would say they also work, but 
you might run into some ammunition problems in bigger firefights because it takes simply longer and more ammunition to kill stuff. That's definitely the truth. You can of course get a lot of crit damage with the assault rifle and also salt in the wound is a very good perk I think for it. The problem is definitely that the crits are not that high and stuff is not dying. Maybe it's also lacking a bit armor penetration which might be solved with Phantom Liberty because Phantom Liberty adds some new weapons like a tech submachine gun and there you can get the armor penetration from the tech weapon tree. So that might be a very powerful synergy in combination with the problems of that. I also feel like that SMGs are much stronger than the assault rifles right now and work at least better. I could also imagine that smart weapons might be the way to go here because there are also um, some synergies in other trees, especially the intelligence tree, where you can tweak smart weapons further. So maybe this is actually helpful. I didn't test that out too much, but the standard ones often felt like very lacking and fighting max tech, I ran out of ammunition very, very fast, which was different in all the other builds I mentioned here. It just took like one to one and a half magazines to sometimes kill an armored police guy. So that is definitely a problem. The best weapons I tried was the Psalm and also the Umbra was surprisingly good. The new QB was also pretty good, but it's a semi-automatic rifle. So keep that in mind if you don't like that. And I didn't try out ricochet damage because there are also some crit bonuses on that as well here and there. But you have to look into cyberware to get those out. Overall, my impression after testing all those builds was that they potentially reduced the build variety quite a bit and they really gutted the perk trees. We lost a lot of perks and even some mechanics that were there before that we now can't invest into anymore, which is very unfortunate. However, I must say that the builds that we now got are just far more interesting and often also more fun to play than before because all of these um, procs and active passive abilities you can now have with those builds. So they definitely took something away from the game but gave us something cool new and I think there's also a lot of undiscovered synergies especially with the new weapons in Phantom Liberty and also the reworked iconic weapons and weapon mods in the uh, base game. I should also mention weapon mods got reworked quite a bit and now are also for me at least, more interest. You can do some stuff in Phantom Liberty. You also got some very interesting consumables you can get that also give you some interesting stat bonuses. So they moved a lot of things kind of around while others were completely removed. But overall, I have to say, I really have a good time and I think the combat became actually more fun with it. And even though it's maybe just because now you have an air dash and just so much mobility is always fun, at least for me in those games, like some of the stuff they added really adds a lot to the game. And I'm very curious to see what people, when they had more time with the game and really looked deeper into all these options than I could in this relatively short time now, and see with what builds and strategies they might come up with. So I'm very curious how this will develop in the future further. But I think they have a very solid foundation now. And maybe some mods can also expand on this further, which would be pretty cool, I think. And this brings us to the end of the video. I hope this was even remotely helpful to anyone. If so, maybe press the like button, leave a comment, tell me what your builds potentially are, what you have found out and maybe some wishes for stuff I should maybe discuss or look into would be much appreciated. Also, maybe subscribe for more content about Phantom Liberty, Cyberpunk and all kinds of other games here on this channel. Maybe check also the main channel for Lord of the Rings and Tolkien stuff if you are into that. I'm also currently streaming my Phantom Liberty playthrough on Twitch, which is painfully slow. So maybe look into that if you are interested in more of my nonsense. I should also mention that the first few mods for Cyberpunk were updated already and restored some basic functionality, but of course need further updates to be fully compatible with Phantom Liberty and all the new content. That will for sure take time, but what the mod community is doing is much appreciated, so shout outs to them as well. And further shout outs to all the people helping me out and supporting me. Much appreciated. Thank you for that. See you people next time. Goodbye.